Hi guys! So in this video I wanted to share with you a lot of new plants that I got. I was in Lowe's and I discovered that they just got succulents. Obviously Kylo really wants to be in this video. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can you like move a little bit? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so they just got succulents and some of them were not even unboxed and what really made me excited is that they had some euphorbias. I have never before seen euphorbias in small pots like this. As soon as I saw them, I got them. They also had obisa, obisa hybrid. I didn't got that one because I already have it, but I would highly recommend check your uh, closest lows. What I love about big box stores is you never know what you're gonna find because every year they change a little bit the assortment of plants. So they're here and I'm gonna lift them so you can see. Uh, I just knocked over this one so it's bleeding a little bit but this guy is some type of euphorbia. Um, they didn't put ID but I'm pretty sure it is and these are all blooms and then there is some new um, branches growing. You can see the red parts are bloom. So I'm really excited about adding this one. I don't have anything similar to this. So, and then I also got this one. You're going to be able, no problem to find it. They had a lot of these in Lowe's. Uh, this was just marked as Euphorbia species. It reminds a lot to Euphorbia perox, but it's a bit more chubby. So I'm not sure what it is. So I'm going to repot those two. And then this was actually, guys, one of my uh, first cactuses that I had as a child, I think at, at age 13. And I had it when I started collecting succulents. And I don't know what happened, but I lost this one. Didn't have it for years. And I was kind of looking to buy one. And I decided that I should just get one because I really like that this one had blooms. Uh, some that haven't opened. So it's going to be nice to watch those blooms opening. I have been enjoying a lot Mamillarias. And actually this winter I added about, I think four or five different Mamillarias to my cacti collection. So maybe I'm gonna show you those today as well. And then in the first lows that I went to, I found this Echinopsis hybrid called Flambo, Flamboe. Um, Anyway, it's, it has blooms getting ready to open and some of these varieties of peanut cactuses that I have, they have beautiful blooms and they bloom every year, no matter if they had pests, no matter what happened to them. So I was really excited to find it. But then I went to another Lowe's and found something similar, just bigger. So I almost, I probably wouldn't buy this if I saw this one in the first Lowe's. Look how beautiful it is, guys. It's so big. Echinopsis rose quartz. It has so many blooms getting ready to open. So I have a friend that's 99 years old and she kept telling me in the last year, buy me a cactus that has uh, red or pink blooms. And I thought, I gotta buy her this one. So I bought this big one with intention of splitting it in half and uh, gifting her half and keeping half for myself. And then same day as I was getting this, uh, uh, I saw a friend who is volunteering at a very small conservatory, Andrews uh, Botanical Conservatory in Berrien Springs, Michigan. And um, I got some plants from her. So one of them is this cutting of I can't remember what's the name of this plant, but I've been looking at it for a while and somehow I never got it, but it has these perfectly round coin shaped leaves. And so I am planning to try to root this one. Uh, I'm excited about that addition. And then she had this one in the conservatory and it was marked as white ghost, which euphorbia, but I honestly don't know if it is. It reminds me to my Nuti, but it's bigger and it has a little bit different coloration. So I got two cuttings. One actually, they accidentally broke off. So it was just there on the side. So I got that one and I asked for one more cutting that I'm gonna probably shorten because it's really, really leggy. 
and uh, and I'm going to try to root them and add to my Euphorbia collection. So I got small pots here, and I don't I don't know if I'm going to continue recording here, so I don't make mess. But um, I was thinking to just uh, place all my cacti are in black pots. This one is very very fragile, so I will try not to mess much with that one. I'm going to be very, very gentle because this one easily, easily sheds pieces. You can see. They come already so root bound, and I think that's good because they a lot of times overwater them in the big box store, so that's probably what keeps them alive. So I'm just going to check the height one more time. And then I'm gonna add some soil on the sides. Okay, and the same thing I'm gonna do with this uh, Echinopsis hybrid. Um, and this one, I don't know, I'm gonna record how I'm gonna divide it, but I'm just gonna go get some soil and another tray so I don't make mess here, and then we'll continue. So I'm gonna try to divide this one. Um, so you usually loosen up the soil and roots and try to separate them from the pot by kind of squeezing the plastic pot. There it is. Okay, so looks to me like this is all one bunch, so it's really hard to get it completely evenly divided. Um, I think I might be keeping this smaller section because you know my biggest black pots are these these ones that I keep for cacti so I might just keep this smaller one okay let's see if there is any small section out of here that I can remove maybe this one yeah, and then leave this in the big pot. Okay. So this piece, this piece doesn't look like it has roots. Um, so it's just a cutting. So I'm just going to tuck it in here. So you can see how it looks. I just want to add a little bit soil on this side. I should have brought some of my tools from downstairs, but I was trying to save time and not go up and down. I'm happy with this look. Uh, and I think she's going to be really happy to get this big plant that has a lot of blooms coming up. So, yeah. I'm going to probably put it back in this pot, just add some soil. So this one is situated, and then these cute euphorbias that are going to join the other euphorbias that, that are very root bound. Look at these roots, guys. It's probably why it's not moving at all. I'm wondering if I'm going to actually have to cut this plastic because it's not moving one bit. I'm going to quickly go get scissors. So, it was so stuck. Oh, here it is. I'm definitely not going to water this one. It actually feels wet. So, just putting it in one of these white pots. I'm going to use my soil mix.
If you see these green little pieces, that's the fertilizer that I already added in my mix that contains cocoa brick, one third cocoa brick, one third co espuma, organic soil mix, and perlite, and the fertilizer. So I go through soil so fast, guys. I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's disappearing. I do sell a little bit of plants in a marketplace, so I do spend soil for that, but otherwise I really don't know where it goes. I don't throw it away. Maybe I just keep adding plants. Maybe that's what it is. All right, so pretty guys. I'm so excited that Lowe's finally got these. And you know, they were $5 with tax. This one was $5 with tax and the other one in a same size pot because it had a glued flower, plastic flower was uh, about 90 cents more. <laughs> but they didn't have these without flour. So I just got it. Fortunately, euphorbias don't get so much damage when you remove the glue. This is where the glue was, so you can barely see it. Um, so I was happy about that. Let's see some kind of bug crawling. Um, okay, let's see if I'm going to have a better luck with getting this one out. Okay, this one got out easily. So I'm going to place this one in a black pot. Why not? I have one of my tools that I keep pressing the soil on the sides. Sometimes I use the, uh, the brush as well, the opposite side, to kind of push the soil so that I can... I hate when it's not pushed all the way because then when you water, the water runs through these uh, sides and, and the plant doesn't get enough water. This white sap um, can be toxic. Just make sure not to ingest it or get into contact with the eyes or lips. I had it on my hands many times. I didn't seem to have reaction, but if you want to be safe, use gloves. I'm going to just wash it off so that it doesn't leave any stain on this one. Okay, and then I also have this little guy that got out really easily. Okay, so this one will need to be cleaned up a little bit. So here's this euphorbia that I got. Because it broke, it's very uneven here. It has like a little flimsy part. I think I want to even it out before, you know, potting it. I'm going to have to wash this off. Um, and then this one is really, really leggy. So I'm going to shorten that one and cut it somewhere here. And what I'm going to do with this rest of the plant is just take it to conservatory and try to root this as well. So, and uh, yeah, well, maybe I'm going to put it in this white pot in a completely dry soil. I just have to wash the sap off. All right, guys. So now I'm going to show you unboxing from about a week ago or a few days ago and purchases that I made uh, from gas farms. And uh, then I'm going to give you a tour of my Echeveria Gavoides part of collection. Hi guys, so I just came from work. It's Monday evening and I received package from Succulent Eden. Michelle has become my favorite uh, seller to go to for Korean imports and succulents in general. She has the best prices of imported plants and really great customer service so definitely recommend you check out uh, succulenteden.com all right so i almost forgot what i have ordered because it's been over a month because there was a plan that i really wanted that was part of the order and it hasn't arrived yet so it took a little while so actually i'm gonna be probably surprised as i'm opening these all right so there is total of five plants Okay, guys, <laughs> I, I'm opening first one and the only thing that's sticking out 
is this beautiful bloom. Look how pretty it is. So let's see what this is. Oh yeah, this is uh, Echeveria Fabiola. I lost my big one. I do have two pups from that one uh, that I used to have, but I really wanted to get another one just because I, I enjoy this one so much. It's such a beautiful Echeveria, guys. Look at that. And then it's plus, it has a bloom. So pretty. Next is my third or fourth attempt to Echeveria Rainbow. I do still have some survivors, but this one has been really fussy for me. But I just think it's so beautiful. So I wanted to try again. So this is cutting that has a little bit of roots. So, okay. Oh, I love this one. This was my birthday gift from a year and a half ago and it was very sensitive and it didn't make it. So I decided to try again. I think it's called, um, is it purple something? I'll have to find the ID, but it's, it just it has these tiny little rosettes they get um, much stronger pink when they're under lights, but the color is so pretty. Like a bouquet of pink little rosettes. Now we're finding, coming to the most exciting parts of my order. Really, the reason why I ordered these plants were these last two plants. I'm so excited. Oh, look at this one, guys. Look at the beautiful variegation. Oh, can't wait to put it under lights. And look at this beauty. Oh my gosh, so excited. I love the dark red tips. I like the little speckles, dots on the leaves. I think it's just so amazing. I think it had a bloom in the middle. Yeah. So I have become, I discovered a really a fan of different kind of Echeveria agavoides hybrids. I have started enjoying those more than uh, some other Echeverias. Uh, isn't this stunning looking? All right, well, I'm going to also show you some new additions um, that I got from Gas Farms. So here are some of my new additions from Gas Farms. Sorry about the mess. I'm in the laundry room where my soil is currently. I'm going to reuse this pot um, that I got as a gift with a plant from somebody. But here are the additions. So I have this beautiful blooming um corn cob euphorbia and i do have this one already i would probably sell mine i got this one just because it was so full of blooms and really interesting looking this is amazing raindrop such a very i can't wait to propagate it today then i have this one um that i purchased from gas farms two years ago and it grew so interesting like a bonsai tree and I want to just play with it, so that's why I bought it again. And then I have here this overgrown, um, I thought it's called Cuban oregano, but I'm not 100% sure that's true or not. But I'm going to chop it up uh, because you can see it's very leggy looking. Okay, so, and there's some branches that are kind of breaking. So this pot that I got prepared, is going to be for that. This one smells just amazing when you're like attach the leaves or manage this plant. It's really cool. Might even take what's left over from this one to conservatory because I think it's going to continue to grow. I don't think we have it there. Um, and this one here, guys, so exciting. 
I'm gonna behead and hope that it's gonna grow some more babies. Um, I wanna go underneath most of these leaves. I'm just gonna see. This is pretty thick area, so. Oh man, I had to help with a knife cutting process because this just was butchered because it wasn't coming out, guys. It was very, very thick stem. So I have one here that's damaged. I don't know what's gonna happen with that one. Um, and I don't think beside that I have to remove anything else. So that's gonna be left to dry. And then here I have some debris. I'm just gonna pull that off. I think most of these leaves are still attached. So, um, yeah. So we'll see how what happens with this one. I think except this one, this one's very flimsy, but I'm gonna leave it still attached. So I'll keep you updated on that. So here I am in my plant room, uh, and I'm gonna give you update on Echeveria agavoides collection. And I have been really enjoying this group of Echeverias. I think because they can be uh, sometimes on a natural light um, and do just fine, or they don't have as high of a demand for light but when they are under lights uh, they get these beautiful colors and i have been enjoying so much coming here to the plant room and just seeing them in the tray under lights and i'm going to first show you how they look like in the tray and then i'm going to pull them out and you can see close up each one and as i go through that uh, part of my collection i will also show you how new uh, potted additions are doing. So here I am underneath my lights and this is the tray all the way on the left with Echeveria agavoides. Look at these colors guys. Oh my gosh it makes me so excited and happy when I look here and there is one of them blooming that's that new addition. So I'm going to pull them out so you can see close up how they look. So this is my um, Echeveria, I think it's called Purpursorum. There is two different forms. One is whiter form and one is a darker form. And this darker form I have propagated more than once. And this is... Um, these two are groups, are stems. Like there was just a stem left with few leaves. So I have few rosettes growing here. And then I have here, I think five rosettes in total. So cute. This was a leaf propagation of the same one. This is Romeo. It's kind of dehydrated. I don't know why. Maybe I haven't been giving it a lot of water. Hmm yeah there's a little bit of debris i hope it does feel dry the soil even though i watered hmm. well i haven't been soaking these so i think that's probably what it is they needed a little bit more water this one here i don't know exact id but i did notice it's growing another rosette underneath here i don't know if you can see so excited about that really cool i don't think there is any other on the other side but this is that new addition that i got so beautiful all right i think this is ebony if i remember well it's so red under lights and has those uh, darker tips just so beautiful this one, when I purchased it, was sold like a Romeo, Romeo Agavoides, but it's completely different than this one. So I think it's just a different um, type of plant. 
this is my bashful that is just so colorful. These were two dollars cuttings that I purchased from Plants of Joy. Um, it was a type of agavoides full autumn something. I can't remember exact ID, but it's um, really pretty color as well. This is one of those new additions next to it. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. Love the colors on it. And then this is the one that Amanda and I got together one each and um, it's really beautiful but as you can see recently has got mealy bugs and I'm gonna have to be on top of it and um, spray it again. Okay. Um, I, this is the intruder in this tray <laughs> because it doesn't completely fit in but it's okay. This is one of those new additions. Look at the colors guys. So pretty. And then here is my one of my Echeverius lipstick. Such a beautiful plant. I really love it. So I love these agavoides really. Um, I would love to get some more uh, to this particular part of my collection. And let's see who else I got that's new that I haven't shown you. So here are some of the mammillarias that I added to my collection this year. Um, this winter I got this one now, the <laughs> blooms are closed, but it's been blooming for the last month. I got this one um, at Meyer, and uh, it's such a cute and soft mammillaria. Then I got obviously this one, that's the one that I showed you today. And this one here that's preparing to bloom. And then this one here. I don't think I have ID for any of these, so if you wanna let me know what they are. I think this one is preparing to bloom as well. I've been seeing some pink here. Uh, so fuzzy. <laughs> So yeah, just to quickly show you some of the new additions. This one finished blooming, uh, corn cob, but you can see how it looks now in white pot. Here is the that new addition from Lowe's. And another one on this side. And this is all the rooted cuttings of the Cuban oregano. In the pot and here are the cuttings of this um, euphorbia that I'm not 100% sure what ID is what the exact name is of this one so if you do know you can let me know in the comments hope you guys enjoyed this video um, thank you for watching see you next time